Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will learn about the VLOOKUP function which can return multiple return values or multiple row values in one query. That said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified. Just for your quick info, if you want to upskill yourself, master business analytics skills and land in your dream job or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's cohort of various business analytics programs. Simply Learn offers postgraduate program from Purdue University in collaboration with Amazon, Google and Microsoft. Through this program, you will gain a knowledge and work ready expertise in skills like prescriptive and predictive analytics, regression, classification and over a dozen others. That's not all, you also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts and top tier product companies and academicians from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into a business analytics role as a fresher or moved on to a higher paying job profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and the description box below. Now without further delay, let's get back to the practical mode. Now I have started my Microsoft Excel. So here you can see I have dealer, quantity ordered, price, sales, product line, country, etc. Now if I wanted to apply VLOOKUP function and find out the sales, what luxury motors made, then obviously VLOOKUP will return me the first row. But if you see, there are multiple luxury motors available in the list. Now what I want to do is, Whenever I give the dealer as luxury motors, I should get all the available rows and all the uh, data related to luxury motors. So we need to modify a couple of things in our VLOOKUP to get this done. Now let's get that done. So first we will try to tag the multiple repetitions of each and every dealer. That is we want to do a count or runtime count. So how to do that? It's simple equals to the first cell where we have the values which is b2 and the function which is count f and now the first cell again and now carefully look at that i'm trying to freeze it so we have frozen the first cell so starting from the first cell to the last cell right so yeah i think it's not frozen let's try to freeze it once again function f4 should freeze it now from B1, sorry, I, I mean to say the first cell B2 to B3, B4, B5 and Bn. So the first cell will be fixed and the rest one will go on as the function will be scrolled down. Comma, again B2. Now close it and enter. Now you will see what happens when I scroll it down. Right, so somewhere we have luxury motors here. So Luxury motors is available 13 times in this particular data set. Now the first part of it is done. Now we will go to the lookup part. So here equals to we look up. Everything is absolutely same, right? You just need to make few minor modifications to your existing we lookup function. The first one is the running count, which we made here, which we will be using shortly. Now the lookup value. So the VLOOKUP function, now the lookup value, okay, we did not specify the lookup value, is key. So we have this particular one, let's paste the same here and change the color a little bit. This will be our lookup value. So here equals to VLOOKUP, now the lookup value. And remember, we are not giving the exact value, we are trying to change a little. So let's keep this as fixed. Let's make sure that the lookup value is always pointing to this particular cell itself so let's freeze it and along with that we will give some other important attachment remember we have the running count for all the dealers here luxury mod one two three similarly when you are trying to pull multiple values or multiple rows then you might want to give the individual identity to that right so this is the first occurrence this is the second occurrence for that we will use the row function so r o w row and we are giving the row reference to this particular cell, right? And uh, we want that particular cell to start from number one, right? Currently we are at uh, row number two. So let's give it as minus two or sorry, sorry, minus one. So from this particular, you can see that, right? Here it is row two. 
So if you give it here, it will start with row 2. So if we subtract minus 1, the numbers will come from 1. And uh, this is the first part. After that, we will give the lookup area table array. So this is the table array that I will be referring to. There you go. Comma. Now we can just give the uh, column number, right? Let's say I wanted to find sales. So I'll give the sales uh, column number as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what if I wanted to get all the details, right? So in that situation, we might have to take use of index match functions. So out of that, we will take only the match function. So let's call match function, press tab to select. And now the lookup value for match. So your lookup value for match will be this particular cell. Let's try to freeze it. There you go, comma. Now in this particular freezing option, you might have to freeze the first row. I mean, uh, the, uh, I mean, not row. You have to freeze the first column. That is I column, right? You have to freeze this. And whenever you are trying to extend your function, it should dynamically change. So for that, let's freeze it again. Now you can see uh, the row number one is frozen. But the column, if you switch from dealer to quantity order, it will change. So you will understand this when I completely finish the function, right? Now the lookup array. So this is the lookup array we should be looking at. So from B to this G. And now let's freeze it. There you go. Comma. Let's take the modified uh, address as well. Now the match type will be uh, true. I mean, okay, let's use the RPCS yes. match type. So we want exact match. So zero, press tab to select and close the match function. Now the last type or the last parameter of the lookup function, we want exact match. So false, press tab to select, enter. There you go. Now we will copy luxury motors here and paste it in the lookup value. Copy luxury motors, paste it here, enter. There you go. We forgot to freeze this particular address. Yes. There you go. Now, what if I scroll this? We have all the appearances, right? And you can understand wherever you have any, that is where the data ends. You can also try to, you know, modify this wherever. Let's say uh, if I adjust my lookup function here, if error right then give me zero or nothing or space whatever you want let's give space enter right now what happens is if you extend this after a certain occurrence you will only see space bars which means it has ended there so that's how uh, you use multiple uh, or that's how you extract multiple rows from one single lookup function. Instead of this, instead of this complex calculation, you can also use the filters and it will also simplify your job. So it's another lesson for another day. And with that, we have come to the end of this session on how to get multiple rows using one single VLOOKUP function. If you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you require the resources like PPT or the data set that we used in the session, please do let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to help you as soon as possible. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.